Greetings, everyone, and welcome to episode five of, I believe it's five. Is it five? Probably five. Who knows? It's one of the episodes of Creative Chats. And here we have the awesome band, The Artificial. The yeah. Artificial yeah. are a band. Hello. Hello. The Artificial, a band that are currently based in Falmouth. And yeah, introduce you guys. So who are The Artificial? Well, we have on, on electric guitar, Anderson oh. Forsyth. Hello, everyone. Um, we have on vocals, Demelza Cornish. Woohoo! O'Connor. Hi. And Tom <laughs> Hearn. And we also have. Uh, it's on drums. Oh, drums. Oh, it's on drums. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Alex. Uh, just guy who hangs around. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, who's not here, is on bass. Mm. And Cass is on rhythm. Yes. But um, we're a six piece indie band. Mm. Yeah. 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 That's probably the best description of <laughs> that's, not, that's exactly who we are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You guys. Um, so you guys are quite unique in the fact that you have um, two lead singers, am I right? Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah, I actually didn't think about that. Yeah, yeah actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not like either of you are back, you both lead, aren't you? So, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, I guess you're. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of tricky finding covers to do as well that, are, yeah. that have two lead singers. There aren't actually many other indie bands that have two vocal lead singers. Yeah, that's, that's something unique. Wow. How <laughs> oh, is this the first time we? <laughs> I, don't know. I always thought you were like the best part of the band. Well, I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting, because because when I sort of like I heard you guys live the first time, I thought that was really really interesting. How you guys had um, two main two lead vocalists instead of it just the three. one. It used to be three. Yeah, yeah. three. Main the OG band that was. Those were the days. We've changed a bit since then. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had three and now we've cut down. <laughs> yeah. Well, really yeah. yeah. Nearly locked my microphone. That's fair. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about your name because I thought the artificial is quite a quite an interesting name for a band. So I just I I was curious to see where it came from. I can't lie, Richard. What did I say? <laughs> You're being quite disappointed by it's, the answer. It's quite a boring story. Um, we were in the stunnery on a Monday. Did you know the Jaeger <laughs> deal they used to do? Oh, that? the Jaeger deals, yes. Is if a, anyone's, if was, anyone's watching and is not from Falmouth Uni, basically the on-campus stannery, um do this amazing deal on Jaeger bombs on Mondays. So Jaegers and Paul was was the general thing to do in first year. Yeah. People that was the motive, wasn't it? Yeah, that was what we did on Monday night. And we were trying to like figure out a name. We didn't have a name, and we were like, we need a name. We were like the last band of that. Name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, we needed a name for our module, didn't we? And we were assessed, and it was like, you have to have a name. Yeah. Um, and I was eating a bag of crisps. Like kettle chips. Yeah, <laughs> kettle, like sweet Thai chili kettle chips. Walk sensations. <laughs> 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 the pack said no artificial colours. And we all agreed that was that would do. We were like, yeah, I was like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, we should be called artificial. And then I think Demi was like, no, 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 the artificial. And I was like, Ugh, no. <laughs> and I was like, shut up, Andy. And then we had like a vote, and everyone voted on the it's artificial. It's gonna be the most laid back indie approach to naming your band. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, Chris, just read really what's in front of us. We were very proud. <laughs> we're like, yeah, that'll do. That's fine. Could literally have been anything. We could have been like Stella Artois. <laughs> Bottle of wine. La Bière. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be over 600 years of Belgian brewing experience. <laughs> yeah, that's the story. That, unfortunately, that's, yeah. That's, that's, you know, an interesting story. You yeah. know, it could, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was, that, that's, how we, that's how we're all here today, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Fortunately. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, you guys... I think from the sounds of that, you guys have quite a good chemistry as a group then. Oh, uh, you'd think that. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Andy, so... Yeah, I'm the uh, punching bag of the group. <laughs> the punching bag. Yeah. I think... Oh, no. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all gelled better than we, were, we thought we would. Yeah. Originally. It I seemed think... to have a got first, didn't it? Yeah. Well, we were all kind of put together in a band. Almost... Mm. Right. Yeah, so how you were with the doinks, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. 
just and, forced together against our will and then you know had to do something yeah because they thought the music we make would be interesting yeah mm. Good job. Turns out it was a bit artificial in the end. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Classy, man. This guy. <laughs> this guy. This guy. Here it is. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. So yeah, um, I wanted to ask, like, because one of the things when looking at you guys, because um, you're currently based in Falmouth, but you come from quite a variety of different places. Sort of like on the subject of gelling as a band, you you whereabouts do you all come from? Because I think don't you all come from like quite far away and then down into Falmouth? Me and Ruby are gel because we're both northerners, aren't we? That's a big lie. <laughs> and Andy's from Birmingham and I'm from Liverpool and they are very far away from each other. Both northerners. No, that's from the Midlands. Yeah, no, I'm from the Midlands. Yeah, I'm from I'm from the very middle. I'm from I'm like as far away from the sea you can get. Which is pretty lame, <laughs> but I'm from I'm from Milton Keynes, Northampton area. I see. Oh. I'm from West Oxfordshire, so about an hour, hour, forty five minutes mm. out of Oxford city centre. I'm from Devon, which is in Devon. Devon, Devon. One county over. And Alex is from. Alex is from. I've never spoken about it. Brighton. No, he's from like South of London. He's from Whitchurch. Yeah. Why did I say Bristol? I don't know. Alex, our basis is from Whitchurch. So yeah. We are from a, a variety like, yeah. of places. Yeah. That's crazy. How's it like being? How's it like being um, in the south? It's great. I, I, I like it. I tell you what, it is, it's not a lot different from home for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, funnily enough, same. Yeah, Tom went to Bristol. Tom wasn't. Yeah, Tom, Tom wasn't. In, Tom, Tom joined drum. like. Three... Pass used to be the drummer. I used to yeah. drum. <laughs> Believe that. It was wow. rubbish. It was so bad. I was, was the so bassist for a week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were. Oh, um, God. <laughs> it was, no, yeah, yeah, no, Tom joined by like a month in, maybe. Yeah. yeah. And got forced into. <laughs> and got forced band. into a really bad indie band. I'm sorry, Tom. <laughs> I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> how did you, how did you meet him? Sure. Yeah, his hair was super long. Cool. He, he, his hair was super long. I do remember that. How did you meet Tom? Did you just sort of like find him and go, "You'll do," and then <laughs> get yeah, him in? Room, room, yeah. They are meant to be in this room. We were like, okay. we were like <laughs> "Cool." <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just sat down on the drums and started playing. We were like, it doesn't sound too bad if we start playing along. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Let's go with it. It sounds worse when we join in. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like most of our band sisters are like, "Oh yeah, that's all right." Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, Tom just. Tom just joined our group, didn't I? I think Johnny knew we needed a drummer, so he, he gave us yeah. which, which he is threw us a lifeline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's Cassie, a great drummer. No, he's not. I'm not that good. He's not that good. <laughs> <laughs> so funny because they've got those electric drum kits, they're just so tiny. It's like this. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah, how do you find working together in a band now, now that being in a six is like the maximum you can be in? We're not allowed to be in one in on campus, we can't use any of the practice rooms. It's max four is more yeah. And even when we were recording the other day, me and Ruby weren't allowed to be in the same studio or even in the control room as the boys when we were recording our song. But that is a good hint to our single that will be We have out. a single coming up. Yeah. <laughs> That's mad. It's coming from the um, kind of EP Pro. of uh, No Girls Allowed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go check out. Yeah, how do you find platforms? How have you found working in the studios like that? Has it been weird? Well, I mean, of course it's been weird, but like we haven't really done that much work. You only did like one. Reese doesn't sound too good, but we actually haven't practiced in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I'm practicing on Wednesday, everyone. By the way, yeah, I Wednesday. recently dislocated my knee, so I couldn't turn up to anything. Yeah, that's right. And he fell over in spoons. Yeah. But I feel like when we write anyway, we write in, in little bits of the band, not as the whole group generally. Yeah, that's true, actually. Like, me and Ruby wrote some work on our own parts yeah. and yeah. 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 yeah, me and Ruby wrote some. Yeah, and me and Alex over lockdown were doing some stuff together. It's kind of good, though, because like everyone's obviously got their own opinions in the writing process. Mm. And then, so when everyone does it with individual people, kind of separately and bring it together, that is kind of get a good mixture of like a lot of one person's input and then maybe a little bit of someone else. <laughs> That would end up with a different mixture of. You get that? <laughs> <laughs> that is one of my favourite things about this band, is the fact that everyone does suggest stuff. 
Yeah, it's not, yeah, like, it's not, it's not like somebody's project where we're just kind of tagging along. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's like an actual group and we all put in. Yeah, I mean, the single we are coming out with soon, we wrote in like 45 minutes or something like that. Yeah, really it was Cassie's idea. Yeah. We had a pre drinks at your house and you were like, yeah, yeah. You were like oh, do you want to hear this song? And I was like, all right. Had he showed it me, I was like, all right, cool, we'll get into the studio. So we went, rehearsed it. Yeah. And you so. maybe had written lyrics. Yeah. There. Tom's really good because he can just turn up and drum. Yeah. <laughs> Tom, we're like, Tom, do this and this. He's like, oh, you're all right. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling good. That's... I still can't play it. <laughs> I wrote a song that was too hard for me to play because <laughs> I'm still a novice guitar player. Oh, I'm not you're novice. not a novice. Yeah. Don't fish yeah, for <laughs> I just don't believe it. You're not a novice guy, you're a beginner. You get <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'll just drink more. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, we have a single coming good. out, Reese. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Let's plug it, plug it, plug it. Plug it. We're gonna we're gonna get like count like fifty or sixty mentions of the single by the time we're like twenty minutes into this chat. Well, in this interview, not knowing about subtext coming out soon to a streaming platform yeah. near you. Or that will be mentioned on our Instagram at We Are The Artificial. Amazing stuff. <laughs> um, so I've got like a list of questions up here that we sort of wrote. Yeah. So I'm I'm sort of going through the questions and asking them. There's a lot to ask about this band, which is really really great, and there's plenty to talk about. Um, so you guys. On the subject of being unique, weird, wacky, all those kind of things. Yeah, carry on. Carry on. Right, I'm just going to end it there. I'm just going <laughs> 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 to. Leave the camera on. <laughs> oh, man. Sorry, Reese, we're interrupting you. That's fine. What do you think? Um, how have you found getting on in the music scene in Falmouth? Because as I said, like with with your sound and everything like that, and every you know, everyone contributing and everything like that, it's I don't know many bands that sound quite like you guys. Yeah. Have you found fa- have you found that? That's really good. At Thank you. The we, good thing about being an indie band in Falmouth is that we can be as terrible as we want and we still have people like us. <laughs> <laughs> wacky indie. Yeah. 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 We supported a lot of bands which have very different genres to us, like we did the Doinks and Pacifically, yeah. and we've done You. We did you, you. So, like, it's really interesting oh, yeah, that a lot of the gigs have a really wide range of genre in music. So, I feel like it's not like one genre is the overruling. Yes. There's like a down very, here, very, very scene. Yeah, like the scene down here is great. I saw Captain Prang a few, like, That's last one. year, and I, they're like completely different to anyone else down here and stuff like that. So, like, everyone down here is different in that way. Yeah, Captain Frank is um, yeah. amazing. I love Captain Frank. Mm-hmm. What are some of your favourite bands? Have you seen many gigs down here? Yeah. We've Fair seen enough, a few. Yeah. Lunchtime concert we've seen quite a few. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Inca Upenda was my favourite Lunchtime I like concert. Hops. They're from the Yeah. She's a girl that did like the that? really um, like Aki Smitty thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Peter from that was really cool. She's amazing. Somber. Like Pretty cool as well. We like Reese Heard. He's yeah, Reese Heard is bangers, man. Reese Heard, who's that? Mm. No, I don't know. He's not Louis Jordan, but Jason's. Jason's. <laughs> Jay, Reese Heard, <Hunter>, Jason's. <laughs> uh, and the Doinks Factor Fifty, there are course mate. Factor Fifty. I watched that one the other day actually. That yeah. one's one, so that was really good. Mm. They're all really good. Oh, Plum Junior, they're really good. I think my favourite. Ah, oh, Plum Junior, are great. Plum Junior were one of the um one of the first acts I sort of saw live down here. Yeah, um, I was the uh, guitarist. Ooh, name drop. <laughs> I'm in the band with them, actually. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah, they're really good. There's really good bands down here. Yeah, I think some places you go, the scene is very much like one genre, but down here it's really nice and very... Yeah, that's yeah definitely. Strange. I haven't thought about that. I think coming from a like predominantly university town, because the people who live in Falmouth are either students or the elderly. So, <laughs> the, the elderly in the night, it's ever just still students everywhere. So it's I think you do get a mixture of people off the music course over the three-year period that they're here, who just end up staying in Falmouth because it's such a cool place to be. Yeah. Mm. I think that was also because we have, because 
from living in a little seaside town before coming to another seaside town to study <laughs> um to study music i found with that there wasn't a university or anything like that there and everyone was very much it, it was its own little bubble in a way it was kind of almost separate from from the rest of the country which was nice in a way because you know everyone knew everyone and everything like that but you didn't get the same sort of range of influences that you get in Falmouth you know you get people coming from all across the country um living here for a few years and that does bring in a lot in, in from a musical perspective it brings in a lot and I think that's one of the reasons why you have tons of uh tons of different bands in Falmouth because you know there's just tons of different people different beliefs different everything and you end up in this scenario where you get you know six people all weird and somehow they want to gel and they create an artificial band an artificial band an artificial that band. Is that is exactly we should put that in our bio an artificial band <laughs> The artificial and artificial band. We're actually yeah. all robots. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you from, Rich? I'd, I'd actually ask you. Uh, yeah, I'm from uh, Brixham, which is sort of South Devon, so it's about 30 miles-ish away from, from Exeter. Brixham. See, pardon? <laughs> Brixham. Yeah, Brixham. <laughs> He's from Devon too. Devon Jairus. Look at that. Got some great, like, they got a great seafood restaurant down there called Claws and Doors. Claws and Doors? Claws and Doors. <laughs> Claws and Doors? Is that, where is that? It's on the harbour, I believe. On the harbour. 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 In, in Brixham? Brixham. Claws and Doors. Brixham. <laughs> Brixham. I believe it's Brixham. Or I'm thinking of Brixton. Not Brixton. Brixton. Brixton's in London. Yeah, Brixton is definitely not in London. I don't know, definitely I don't know. Definitely. I don't know names. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. I've not heard of that one. I, you, I, you, you might be thinking of Rockfish? No, it's not rockfish. This <laughs> whole lot. Oh dear. Interesting. Although, if you ever do visit, rockfish is a very good restaurant to go to. I do like rockfish. What's that old pirate ship thing in the harbour. Oh, yeah, it's, there is a um, replica of the Golden Hind in Brixton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it is Brixton. Oh, okay. It's literally if you are at the front left, on the left, on the other side of that little weird shelter thing. Mm. I have been. Oh yeah. Okay. I think, I think I know roughly where that is. Then okay, interesting. I'll have to go back there when I when I visit the family. Yeah, sorry, completely hijacked them for that. No, I've, ne oh, I've never been to Devon. This is quite interesting. Yeah, I, okay, it's one of those places you hear about. Yeah, don't. But then okay. you just don't go, like just because you're like, oh, I've heard a lot about it. It's one of them places. All my <laughs> friends used to come back with like rocks. Yeah, people collect rocks from there. And you know them yeah. sweets as well that you chew on? Rock. I swear they're a lot yeah. <laughs> They come up with actual rocks and rock. rock. <laughs> I swear a lot of dinosaurs get dug up in Devon. Yeah, the Jurassic like... Coast. That's it, that's it! It's the Jurassic Coast. Is that far? Mm. You? I love those songs. Yeah, it's Not really. Devon and the Isle of Wight. Is it far from you, the, the dinosaurs? Dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've not, I've not personally dug up any dinosaurs in, in my time there, but... Uh, I will. I will see. I will see if there's any there. But yeah. <laughs> this <laughs> guy is a T Rex. <laughs> I'd love to like discover a dinosaur. Or something. I used to have a, a cuddly toy called Bronte, the Brontosaurus. Bronte <laughs> the Brontosaurus. Little, there was a little green. That I, I've still got into this. I love him to this. To this day. I have a toy called Snow Bear, which is a polar bear. But I don't remember Chris. We are as a band of people who own cuddly toys. Yeah. <laughs> I, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I also have cuddly toys. I have a, um, one of my favourite is a red panda, which I named Sarah, and I do like it a lot. Really? I don't that, is our, that is Andy's mum's name. I do not appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't necessarily own a cuddly toy, but I do have 50 rubber ducks. 50 rubber ducks. 50 rubber ducks. I, I actually oh, like yeah. that. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on, <laughs> 50? Yeah. Why'd you get? No way, with you a unit. You would not be able to get in the bath. No, no, no. <laughs> no little ones, they're all stacked up in the bathroom. Right, oh, let's my. all go to Tom's house. Oh, Reese, can you pause this, mate? I've got to say <laughs> it. <laughs> How big are they? They're not 
Man, that seems like it's taken up like an inconvenient amount of room. <laughs> well, take, no, all of them together take up a whole shelf. They all go along the top of the well, shelf. There about there's six one on the six fire tall. alarm outside the door. There's one on the window outside the door. There's two on a picture frame downstairs. You know, there's a bunch around the house as well. Do you collect them or have you just bought them all in bulk? I bought a giant bulk of them. Okay. As well as a giant bulk bag of fun snaps. You know, there's little oh my god, yeah, I love those. And also a hundred fart bombs. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> How did you get into university again? <laughs> I'm really enjoying pranking my uh, housemates. Thank you. <laughs> just leave them just occasionally everywhere, and they're like, "Where are you? Have you guys seen the rubber ducks? What yeah. rubber ducks? Yeah. I ain't seen no rubber ducks." <laughs> it's too spot on. Now your room smells of skunk, idiot. <laughs> I'm just hiding stuff around the house. To be honest. That's mad. Leave a comment in the below below this video if you'd like to see Tom's duck collection. Please, because I want to see yeah. it. We can all we can all do a trip to Tom's house. Yeah, we'll do a we'll do a vlog. Toilet, so we'll do a toilet. Just like a burglar, and they just see chippy rubber ducks. Like, oh, I should not be here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we have um, a giant replica of a uh, Thor's axe as well in our house. I feel like we should be doing this at Tom's house. Tom's house has so much. Yeah. This, sounds like, this sounds whack. Ruby's got cactus. Or cacti. cacti. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> got... <laughs> it's boring. Yeah. You should get some rubber duck. I'm out of there all the rage right now. Oh, We're taking up so much time, Reese has got us. Sorry, yeah, Reese. Sorry, Reese. Next question, mate. It's, it's okay, I, I appreciate the duck talk. <laughs> Next question. Well, so, well, do well. any of you own any new rubber ducks? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I um, plan on painting them to look like a character. Right. Next question. <laughs> Next question. Next question. Let's go. Duck ninjas. <laughs> How I can. Just How jump. I can go. Speaking of ducks, <laughs> let's talk about. What do you want us to talk about? And then we can talk live about music. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> That's what we're doing about like music. <laughs> 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 we can talk for ages. But yeah, going off that point five minutes ago <laughs> about like everyone being from different places down here. That Inku Pendo is from like I think she's either Dem from Denmark or from, like, from Scandinavia. Yeah. And like, oh, honest to God, it was like the best performance I've seen at a lunchtime concert. Really it cool. was so amazing. Yeah, it took up the whole room. Um, lunchtime concerts are really good to, they are, to actually, look yeah. at styles and stuff as well. Mm. Interesting. Performance. See how other people do it. I think you were either the Dorrance or Reese Hurd and Jason were my first lunchtime concert. I know you were there. Yeah, no, it was you. It was you, Dorrance. That's crazy. Yeah, pretty sure. So That's long, crazy. Yeah. I, feel, I feel very appreciated. Thanks. Although I hope the lecturers don't hear this and realise that, like, that was like a month into what was supposed to be a mandatory thing for all first years. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they don't watch this. Uh, nah, it's fine. It's all in the past now. Yeah, yeah. They won't mind. Okay. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, I remember um, there was this one time, little little university anecdote, um, there was this one time, like, I don't, I would say in my first year I was pretty good in terms of attendance, I didn't miss loads of lectures, um, it's just that happens that the one time, I, I it was like a nine o'clock lecture and I woke up and I think I had a gig the night before, and then I woke up at like 10 to and I just decided... There's no point even trying to get out of bed, get on a bus and go to campus. So I'm just going to sit here and wait for my 11 o'clock um, workshop. So, so I got onto campus. It was about five past 11. And I think I decided I was going to do some like vocal recording or something like that afterwards. So I, I booked some equipment out. So I went to go get the equipment, picked it up, turned around. And then Johnny just walks past, <laughs> just walks past. And originally he didn't notice me, but then as I slowly walk down the corridor very nervously behind him, just really hoping he's not going to turn around, I then go to put things in his lock in my in the locker, and then he just turns around, and looks at me, and is like, "Reese, shouldn't you be in a workshop right now?" And I'm just like, oh, no. "Yeah, maybe, maybe." <laughs> and then what, made, then what made it worse was that he then looked as well, and he said, 
Shin, you've been in the lecture at nine o'clock, and I'm like, oh god, he noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny's really and then, he's really lovely as well. Yeah, yeah. He's he's a weird watching this. You're very lovely. <laughs> Johnny, I love you so much. Yeah. Johnny is Johnny is a lecturer that you, you really like, but you don't particularly want to get on the wrong side of. Otherwise you might Impressive. you might fear for your life kind of thing. Mm. I can't remember what I was talking to you the other day, but I was like, we've got really good lecturers, like in the grand scheme, like Dee's amazing. Mm. Adam a lot of experience. Will's so cool. Will is just a chap. He's just <laughs> so a boy. Johnny is an absolute Frankie. legend. Frankie. Frankie. He's awesome. Legend. <laughs> Simon. Simon Waite and Simon Paul as well. The last. Uh, the and last Nora last as well. Nora. Nora, Nora, Nora as well. Nora's a drumstick on the guitar. <laughs> 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 We've had some whack lectures though. It was a really yeah. weird one. They got yeah. Weird. Tom was just saying how he in the last workshop we had he was playing like guitar with a drumstick. It just didn't make sense. Who is that? What, Will? You won there. No, no, was it? I'm not in your workshop. Yeah, it was Will. Oh, was it Will? Yeah. Do you, remember that, do you remember that one we did like right at the beginning of first year where um we were given this uh assignment where we had to like, you know, we were just we were just put into bands and we were told you've got to go off and learn any cover, whatever oh, cover. Yeah. Just learn a cover yeah. and then they... Yeah. 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 And then we got to on the day and they were like, right, so that cover you learnt, you're going to turn it into a specific style. Um, <laughs> what was yours? We did, we chose Arabella by the Arctic Monkeys and they gave us shoegaze and we had all acoustic instruments. <laughs> shoegaze is like very electronic. So. Shoegaze is exactly a massive pedal board and electric guitar. That is all shoegaze is. And we had only acoustic, <laughs> <laughs> and like a keyboard or something. Yeah. Really. <laughs> Yeah. That's kind of shoegazy. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. we did Arabella by the Arctic Monkeys in shoegaze. Was not our fault. Very terrifying. You know what's weird about that, actually? We decided after that, we were like, oh, we'll be a shoegaze band then, won't we? And I remember Tom turning up, he was like, oh, yeah, I used to be in a shoegaze band. <laughs> yeah, you did. I don't know why that clicked from my head. Yeah. To be honest, before that, I had never heard of shoegaze. I didn't know not even the term. I just. I love shoegaze. Some people got like yeah. country and some people were like, oh, do folk or rock. And then they were like, Johnny was like, oh, shoegaze. We were I was, like, wow. I was, I was rooting for reggae. Another, yeah, <laughs> reggae would have been mm. so cool. Another great shoegaze band is uh, Slow Dive. Um, oh, they yeah. are. Yeah, yeah. They are good. yeah. We surprisingly got lucky because I think we had a Nirvana song and we were given doom metal. Yes, I remember. Yeah. Um, and I think looking back, we were actually quite lucky because all we really had to do was just slow the entire thing right down and sing as like as sing as gravelly as we possibly could, and we were fine. Mm -hmm. I feel like it would have been fine if we had appropriate insurance, but yeah. we just did it. Yeah. I don't own pedals. I need to really invest. Yeah, you do. Actually. I should really invest in pedals. Yeah, I do know what you mean though. I've never, as a guitarist, I've always just relied on like a foot switch for yeah. my amplifier. I've always had a foot switch on my amplifier for changing sounds and stuff. And then I came to uni and of course I couldn't bring my amplifier and none of the amplifiers are foot switches. So I'd literally be there in rehearsals, like leaning, like trying to sing and then just like run over, click the thing and run back as though nothing was happening. What? It was ridiculous. My uni. Sorry, I just carry on. Sorry, <laughs> didn't mean to. Uh, it's all right. Um, I think I finished there anyway. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> for some reason, our uni, especially because I, I have a lot of friends that do music at different universities. So I, I've got some in Liverpool. I've got a few in London now, um, and whatever. And like, whenever I compare my experience, I've got one in Durham now actually as well. Your friends. I've got, friends. <laughs> yeah, we I've got five friends. <laughs> <laughs> But whenever I compare like, my uni experience, it's like the course in Falmouth is so different to any course. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, around anywhere else. Like, I've got friends at ICMP in London right now, and they're telling me about like the stuff they do. I'm like, oh, in first year, we learned about like all this really complicated stuff that had philosophy. In it. Yeah, we learned about philosophy and stuff. And like, it's all Falmouth, I think, is very experimental. It's like, Try these drum synths on top of this with this and that, yeah. and then here's this other thing that's yeah. like this box that and we you're made. You're doing this genre, but think about why you're doing it and what yeah. like, what the 
history. And I yeah. think there's a weird box that just has no. a switch on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I can't do what it's called. Dominatrix. Dominatrix box. Dominatrix box. And I think that's the great thing about Final Fantasy. It's like it, it just like makes you try new things. Like it forces you to try new things. Yeah. But like in a fun way almost. It kind of wants you to know the backstory of an instrument or like a, an artist before you even try and imitate them. Yeah, yeah. Or genre. Yeah. You yeah. hate the lessons, like the workshops where you just sit there and you can't write any things, you can't think of anything. Yeah. And you're just there going. It makes it a lot harder, doesn't it? Yeah, the drum machines aren't good, just going on like a... <laughs> <laughs> you just sat there going like... <laughs> with a drumstick. We did one once where they gave us four chords. I think we were in the workshop. And they gave us a season, and we had to write on a song about it. And there was like four groups. Oh, I remember, had to, like... oh, I remember that. I think I think I did. I want to say I did summer. You did winter. 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 I think I think yeah. I did that workshop as well. I quite enjoyed that. Yeah, where we were. Yeah, you given four seasons and four chords, and you had to write. Um, you had to like write a piece around those four chords based on a on a season why did i forget what a season was called then <laughs> what, what is my brain doing i don't even know um but yeah on yeah i think where do you guys see because of course everything kind of outside of university at the moment is kind of halted in terms of music where do you see like when we're you know in a couple of years when we've all graduated we're out actually being poor musicians and all that kind of thing where do you where do you think everything's gonna be i reckon i'm gonna be homeless <laughs> I've, I've always had that idea <laughs> as well i think the, Us the focus will switch very much to streaming and instead of being cultural switch to like internet streaming cultural or it might revert I'd back to how so gig culture so used to be government's current stance on arts yeah, yeah. the whole fatima Fatima, Fatima could, could be, the next dog could be in cyber, she just didn't know it yet. Cyber dog. Yeah, I might be in cyber this time next year. Yeah, yeah I think we're all going to train but for IT. Just don't know it yet. I'm a, I just don't know it yet. I'm a pop watch and a bloody good one, and I think I'm just going to stick to that. You're a good pop <laughs> Good KD. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, paid well. Um, I don't know. After I think... COVID, I don't know. If you're, if you're waiting on COVID, I think... I don't know. I don't think it won't be back to normal ever, I don't think. Or at least not for another good, like... 10 years I think. I think it will definitely change the way people want to do things like I know that a lot of people I know now have a lot of anxiety about going to festivals and gigs next year because like the idea of being in a mosh pit for them is really overwhelming and like quite frightening yeah so I feel like it will definitely change the whole like the whole thing like, I was in a mosh pit at a Jake Bunk concert <laughs> so weird I reckon <laughs> masks are going to be around for a long time yeah. I think uh, I remember something like, like um, okay. what is it like in Japan where yeah. They all like loads of people wear masks. I reckon they all the time in yeah. Birmingham. Like, um, like Asian people just, just wear masks. masks everywhere. They wear it in Birmingham because Birmingham is so polluted. So it's like it's almost a health thing. Do you need a gas mask? No, no, no. It's just <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, no. I don't. I Jane, I remember back in March, I thinking like, oh yeah, it'll be over in like May. Like we'll all just return to normal life. And now like, we're in October. And it's like mm. we're um, we're still here, and it's like oh my god, like this. I don't know. I personally don't see it end right now. Do you know what I mean? Like, I've 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 no idea where this will end. Yeah, I know. I, I know what you mean. Yeah, hopefully. Have you thought of ways as as you guys? Have you thought of ways that you can adapt to this and still give people music and? Oh, really good oh, oh yeah, okay. I think I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> really you, have, yeah. Have you guys thought about ways that you're going to continue and, and create content in a different way as a group? I think I think it's it's a good time for any musician to just work on their music, but rather than actually working on like touring and organising all of what yeah. how, how are you going to distribute it? The actual music part. Would be quite interesting. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts where they've been saying, like, over lockdown, obviously, professional musicians, big people have a lot of money, so they can just sit around all the time anyway. But when they actually have no work to do, especially because the music, the music industry is like turned off at the moment because no one's doing it, they can actually focus on what they're writing, actually think about it more. So I think by the end of it, we might come out with a whole more different sound, different music, different music, basically. 
from what mm. I just might have had it, it might be good it might be terrible but I might yeah, there's a lot of kind of solo loop stuff coming out at the moment yeah and that, that's it because people can't go into studios so they can work in their bedroom but that's yeah. how you get artists like Tame and Parler started like that Mac mm. DeMarco started like that you ever heard of Book Life? Yeah, you ever heard of Book Life? The film <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with the ads. Do you think? Do you think we're going to see um, on the sort of subject of like doing individual loops and bedroom? Do you think we're going to see a boom in like um, DIY music coming into into the mainstream? Like at home studios, like I think the software oh. itself is going to change to be more user friendly to people who've not done it before because more people are trying to pick it up. There's going to be new stuff. I think logic's quite easy to get. I'm currently yeah, in the middle of building a home studio myself. Yeah, yeah. he's bought fifty panels. How many? Forty-eight foam panels. Forty-eight foam panels and with fifty room. rubber ducks. <laughs> fifty rubber ducks. <laughs> fifty rubber ducks. That's amazing. Currently, uh, about to order all the parts to build a new PC as well. Oh, so you're really going for it? I'm really. Going we're recording. We're recording. Yeah, we're recording. I'm also thinking about getting people to the using trial version. They've given us a free version. Yeah, you have a free version until like 2021. Okay, I'll do that. I didn't know that. That is the one benefit I find of being a university student during these times. The university the university has given us some very nice software. They look out for us, don't they? They do. I think I think they've done I mean I think they've done all right so far. I think in terms of the virus as well, especially because we're more remote than like Liverpool and Manchester and stuff mm. can keep things like steady but also like treat us to an, do you know what I mean by treat like yeah like stuff yeah. like the Bams and it's like no one can afford that it's like logic's like 200 pounds yeah um <laughs> yeah. I was yeah, really like debated I was like I just used garage band in my life <laughs> so it's like the fact we have that for free for like a whole uni course is very um well, I feel very privileged. But I feel like it's becoming more accessible as so well. Like a couple of years ago, if you didn't know anything about music, you would have no idea what equipment was best or what to buy. And now there's loads of like articles and stuff about yeah. beginner stuff like Scarlet. And Even pedals. Like pedals, I have zero yeah. idea what to buy pedal wise. You've also got YouTube now as well. Yeah, YouTube. YouTube as you want. It's a very good example. Yeah. Like pedals and gear. Yeah. 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 Wow. Um, that's yeah. crazy is there any any resources you've found online that you would recommend to people if they're looking to to record or just play music what um, it's good splice splice is like a an art like a sampling it basically has loads of samples of like kicks some people from like kicks and like different percussion to like long like spoken word things just have been taken off and put on there it is like you pay for an account once you've got it, you, you've literally got access to millions and millions of samples, which is really good, especially because samples are huge at the moment. Everyone wants a sample. Everyone wants a sample. Mm. Yeah. I I've spent, I'm sorry, go on. I've spent like the last month just like scouring the internet and downloading as many like plugins as I possibly can. Yeah. So well, I do know what that means. I recommend looking at Splice. 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 It's cool. Splice. I feel like the Logic ones are pretty good though as well, like just yeah, as a starter. Yeah, the default ones are right, yeah. yeah. The default ones are like pretty cool. Not like, obviously like as a, if I was like four or five years ago starting music, I would be kind of okay. Just <laughs> Sorry, Andy. <laughs> that just cracking open. So, Josie, I'm going to greet you as well. It's happening on the side of it. It's He's on it already. Say definitely, if you are looking to record, don't worry about like MIDI keyboards or anything. Get a DI box and get a good one because like that is that is like the best thing. And get a good microphone as well. I have like an SM57. It's mm. like with us and like it's like it's like a life changer. Like it just does make things sound good. I'm currently using the Rode and T1A. I think. I'm using a mm. T1000S. No, I think SM57. Did really you say C1000S? Yeah. As yeah. the microphone I'm using right now. Ah, see, yeah. I've, I've, I've got, got as well, which is quite good for knocking about with. That's cool. Yeah. I've got C1000S, um, the NT, I've got an NT1A over there. Um, I've got this bad boy. 
Oh, yeah, oh, see, that's oh, something you need. Bearing are you for? Oh, if you're going to get one, at least get one with two or more input channels. Like, right? was that the yeah. bearing, uh, Euphoria one? Yeah, it's the Bearing to Euphoria one. I I like this a lot. I got one. This is actually my second one because I managed to completely. I think I pretty much fried my first one because um, with it being four inputs, normally you can run it through um, the computer and it'll be absolutely fine. But they recommend if you're running the four inputs in once that you plug in the additional power supply for it. Um, the power supply is five volts, um, and I managed to plug in a twelve volt one. And after that, it didn't. It stopped working, so I had to buy another one. <laughs> Computer can handle the riff. <laughs> Too <laughs> riffy. <laughs> so yeah, um, but yeah, I love this thing. Is I definitely agree. Get get something like this because the the. For me, like just getting an audio interface and then some software on my computer, it completely, completely changed the way I started writing music like three, four years ago. Mm. And it, it, you know, all of a sudden I went from just writing little ideas to actually composing proper full songs and it made just a massive difference. But having two inputs as well, you can, have, you can have a mic channel and you can also just have like a straight from the guitar in. Mm. channel so it's like yeah it, it just it adds that kind of diversity on us i've got this yeah. uh, <clears throat> little volker volker beats drum machine thing which is so much fun oh nice that's the self editor thing so you just put in where you want to play again because i've got a i've got a scarlet eight focus but i can't remember what it's called yeah, so it's got red two inputs yeah but it's got two xlr inputs and then two jack and uh, i just you can plug in the uh the drum machine and just like riff over the top. It's so much fun. You know, that sounds like, cool. There's like bits, bits of uh, like logic files that are like ten minutes long, and I just delete them after because I just say like, I just forget about them. <laughs> it's worth it. I recommend the Volker Beats. Yeah, Volker Beats. Like a Strike Scarlet. I've got the solo one, so it's just one input, but that's pretty good as a basic thing. That's crazy. It's, it's always it's always cool sometimes to to get an idea of what everyone else is using mm. in terms of equipment. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, on the subject of recording equipment and something we have talked about a little bit earlier in this, that was a good. Thing. You've been recording. Yes. 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 Subtext. We <laughs> mentioned we've got a single coming out. It's called Subtext. So Subtext. Tell us a little bit about the um, single. But the single, uh, it is dancing. Oh. Yeah, upbeat. Yeah, upbeat. It has a really nice riff. Thank you. Yeah. It's got. I, w- I wonder who could have possibly. <laughs> like, that. The vibes are like angry breakup song vibes, but in a dancing kind of way. Yeah. That's a good point. All of our songs lead some way to breakup. some form of breakup. But we like that. We're doing a Taylor Swift. <laughs> um, We're doing a Taylor Swift <clears throat> method. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, there we are. Yeah, subtext is, is really fun to sing and probably to play. I don't know. I think it's our best song. Yeah, it's one of my favourites. I like Call It Day a lot as well. It's nice playing um, the groove on the toms rather than the hi hats. Yeah, mm. But yeah, go, go, go get that song, please. It's not out yet. It's not out yet. So, is it been. I haven't heard, I don't think I've heard much about it. Is there a release date set for it or are you just. No, we, we've got the instruments down and we are still doing the vocals so it'll be we're doing um elliot auburn eli sound uk is, oh, it, is our sound engineer for it so he's lovely he's a boy and, oh, yeah, and, boy, and boy, julia who's so assistant as well, oh yeah julia really lovely but yeah we in the next week next week we're doing vocals and then it will be a couple weeks after that but it will be announced on our instagram at we, we are, are the artificial, artificial. at we are the artificial <laughs> yes Anyone who's watching, go follow the artificial at. We, we are, are the artificial. artificial. We are the artificial. <laughs> we are the artificial. Brilliant. Cool. Awesome. And it Thank should you be so out on all streaming platforms, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think that's answered all the questions. So. Yeah. Thank you for coming on. It's been really, really cool having you guys on. I know we've been planning this for a good Donkeys. couple weeks. <laughs> uh, probably weeks, months. I want. I want to say months. Kids. I've been here since eight, mate. Yeah. We're having us free. Yeah. No, thanks for having us. Yeah.
You're welcome. Yeah, I hope. Um, When's your next single coming out, Reese? Yeah. When's my want. next single? That is a good question. I'm working on stuff at the moment, and hopefully there will be something new out. As, definitely before the end of the year. Definitely before the end of the year. Um, so yeah, I've got. I've had. I've had something that I've wanted to release. I wanted to release it back in like April, but then of course, because of lockdown, we couldn't finish any of it. So I think finding areas where I can sort of put all the final pieces together and finish it. That's what I'm doing at the moment. So hopefully something fairly soon. Well, but in the meantime, yeah. in the meantime, we're going to be following We Are The Artificial and checking out you guys and what you've been up to. Subtext. 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 And, Subtext. And we are the artificial subjects. Yeah. Yeah. What was it in cast? We are the artificial. That's subjects. 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 Just to let you all know, we have, um, just go around on your names again, so we, we know who everyone is. Oh, well, I am Anderson. Anderson. <laughs> I'm Cassius. I'm Ruby. I'm oh. Demelza. <laughs> Demelza. I'm awesome. Alex, well, he's not Alex is here. Alex is imaginary. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll oh. see Yaya yeah, in. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It sounds like Alex is just straight up dying. Yeah. Before we play. Oh, this is actually <laughs> quite a fun story if we've got time. You have time for a little fun story? This is absolutely fine. Hit us with a little fun story. We, no, somebody else explained. Okay. I'm terrible at We stories. were doing the lunchtime concert. Um, well, the last one before lockdown it was, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I think so. Actually. That was our last gig. And Alex, we were all been drinking actually, the night before. Maybe it was gross. And Alex was really ill. Like, he was just really sick. And then he was like, I don't think I can make it. I've like just vomited blood or something. Yeah, he kept vomiting blood before we went on stage. Yeah. And we were like, go home, go and lie down. Break. It's fine. We're we're like, we'll take you to the hostel. He's like, no, that's all right. He said, if I'm going to go, I'm going to go on stage. And he played the whole gig, like almost black, blacking out, didn't remember any of it, but was reasonably on time. For, like, he was fine. He yeah. was great. So, yeah, that's the story of when I based him. Well, that's that's incredible. Yeah, we were. Um, Oh, oh, no. Literally, we finished the last song and we're like, right, let's get off stage. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Alex is going to watch this back and he's going to be like, so how did it go, guys? Oh, yeah, it went great. And then he's just going to get to this part and he goes, so yeah, he was uh, throwing up blood and uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was blacking out on stage. Oh, dear. Very fun. Well, this has been lovely, Reese. Thank, 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 thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome, guys. Thank you for coming on as well. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. A proper indie thing. I'm doing a triangle. Oh, no. I, I just wanted to do it as well. Bye, Reese. Bye. All right. Just leave it. Oh, okay. Bye, so. right, Reese. Then we were going to hang up on you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see Please you. Please end the recording, you fool. He's interviewing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I will. I will end the recording now. So, uh, oh, see, you later, every, see you later, everyone. We are the official <laughs> subject. Subject. <laughs> subject. <laughs>